Hey guys, today I'm back in Kerbal Space Program and I want to try making a rocket that can refuel by mining on Val's surface. Now Val is a moon of Jewel, so I'll be going reasonably far out for this mission. Now I also have a few other experimental weird techniques to try out, but I think I'll just wait to show you them. So let's get right into it. So I'm just starting out here in the vehicle assembly building, and the first thing I'm doing is actually loading a rocket I made in a previous video. Now I'm going to make a completely new rocket for this mission, but just for now what I want to do is use this rocket that I know works and I know can get all the way to Duna, and just go to the moon with it and test out some mining features. So the first thing I'm putting on here that's mining specific is this Convertotron. Now this is the part that's going to be the refinery, and this is what's going to convert my ore into fuel. So speaking of ore, I'm putting down some holding tanks right here. Not sure if I need these necessarily, but they're going to end up holding ore. And after that, I'm putting down two drills in the bottom. And you can see the next thing I'm putting on are solar panels. Now I ended up putting these on because I thought they were retractable. They're definitely not, so it leads to kind of a funny descent. So after I put those on there, next thing I'm doing is putting on some radiators, and these are really important. So the mining component need to be cooled in order to operate efficiently. And you see here, I'm putting down some edge radiators in the top. I thought they'd look cool. They didn't really. I also put down way more than I needed, but I'm going to use those to cool the refinery bit to keep it at an optimal temperature. And also here, the drills, I'm putting down some large radiators on the bottom to hopefully cool those down as well. And after that, you can see here, I'm moving the solar panels to the top. And I also made two other changes before I launched. One of them was adding on another set of solar panels, just because I thought two might not be enough. And the other thing I did was get rid of this extra crew capsule, because I realized I didn't actually need it since I was only trying transporting one Kerbal. And with all that done, it was time to launch. So as you can see here, I'm on the launch pad, and I'm actually going to fast forward this mission a little bit, since specifically this little test isn't the main meat of the video. So as you can see here, starting out, just getting up off the ground, and after that, fast forward in here to when I'm dropping my first stage. They all fall off this really nice pattern, so I just had to show it. After that, you can see here, warping away from Kerbin, and starting to approach the moon. Once I get there, you can see starting to circularize my orbit, and after looking for a little bit, I decided this crater was probably the best to land in. It looked pretty flat, you know, except for all the divots, but assuming I missed those, it looked pretty good. And I didn't want to land in a super crooked position, because if I fall over, I can't take off again. But more importantly, I was worried the drills might not be able to get into the ground fully. So you can see here I started to land, and I picked this spot. I actually missed the crater by a lot, and it's a random slope I found next to it, and it worked out well enough. You you see, but when landing on Val, I'm really going to be a little bit more careful about where I land. So here, I'm starting out by deploying the drills. After I do that, I'm starting up the service harvesters, and I should start collecting stuff out of the ground now. And it seemed like it was doing pretty well, and you can see these tanks are actually collecting some ore in them. Now, it takes a long time to get stuff out of the ground. I was not expecting that. But with these 19 units here, before the sun goes down and I have no power, I wanted to start up the refinery and see what would happen. So to cool it down, I had to activate all of these radiators, and you can see the first one got red hot immediately. I'm not sure why that one got red hot and the other ones didn't, but whatever. So after that, you can see here, starting up the refinery, it's actually generating some liquid fuel and oxidizer. So it is working, it's just really slow, and it used up a ton of ore. So I'm not sure if I was supposed to, like, hunt out a good location to land in where there's good ore, but when I'm landing on Val, there's not really gonna be an option to circularize my orbit, since I kinda have to land immediately. So where I land is sort of where I land. So I'm kinda just hoping for the best here, and you can see now I'm starting to build up the rocket that's actually going to be the one that I used to land. So you can see here, this lander is actually pretty similar to the one I had before, but there's just a few changes. So I'm using a much larger fuel tank this time, and also I'm using four holding tanks instead of just two for the ore. Now, I only did that because I'm fitting in these radiators in between them, and I think it makes this nice looking pattern when I have that. And after I did that, you can see the next thing I'm doing is putting down these really large solar panels. Now, instead of having a bunch of those circular ones, I just wanted to use these, and these also have the advantage of being retractable, so I can end up retracting them before I launch or something, which I think would be pretty good. Now, to put some rockets on the bottom of this, originally I was thinking of using one of these stack tricouplers, and I could stack three dart engines on them, and I figured that'd probably be enough fuel to get off the ground on Val. So after setting up one more fuel tank, I wanted to add on the landing gear, and I was upgrading this from last time. I'm going to use four landing legs instead of just three, and I'm hoping that means even if I landed on an uneven surface, it'll be a little bit better. And you can see in this test here, it has a lot of thrust. In fact, it has probably too much. You can see it was easily getting off the ground, even with a parachute. So since this rocket seemed to be actually kind of too good, I wanted to switch out the three engines for just one, and it gives me a little bit of extra fuel as well. So after doing that, you can see here I'm putting down some landing legs, and I'm putting down some drills like this. Now you can see these drills actually don't fully reach the ground when expanded, so I moved them just a little bit further down, and after that, you can see when I expand them, they just barely get into the ground. Now, in retrospect, I probably shouldn't have cut it this close, but it should work out, especially once the legs contract a little bit once they hit the ground. After that, you can see here I'm putting down two small radiator panels in the drills, and I'm also putting some lights on the bottom of this, but I realized I could change the color, and just for fun, I wanted to go for 
for the RGB rocket here. So that's exactly the lights I put on and you can see that works out well enough here. After that, I'm putting down a decoupler and on this decoupler, I'm putting down a bunch of these Separatron rockets. Now, these have a lot of power. In fact, I'm pretty sure they have the best thrust to weight ratio in the game and I can use these in order to just completely throw myself out of orbit once I get back to Kerbin. Now, that's a bit experimental. I'm not sure how that's going to work out and I think it's going to be kind of funny to get like 10 Gs of acceleration. So with that done, next thing you can see I'm doing here is covering up the entire thing, mounting on this next stage of the rocket. In this stage, I'm specifically designing so that once I get to Jewel, once I have the encounter, hopefully this will get me all the way to have an encounter with Val. So inside that, put down some big engines at the bottom of it and putting down some radial decouplers. And with that, putting down two more large tanks. And these large tanks, I'm hoping are going to be part of the stage that gets me all the way to have an encounter with Jewel. Now I'm going to fire these immediately at launch. So I'm not sure if they're going to be able to get all the way there. I'm hoping I have enough fuel for all this. And you can see I'm putting down some really large engines at the bottom. After that, I'm putting down some boosters in the sides as well. And I'm putting down a heat shield in the very bottom of the crew capsule. Now that heat shield is going to be so that once I hit the atmosphere, it like probably about two kilometers a second. I'll be able to slow down enough and launch my parachute. So starting out here, the launch pad, I want to just give this a simple test and you can see immediately start falling down and I forgot to launch liquid fuel engines and it accidentally hit space, launching off my boosters and that, okay. Next test here. You can see I'm starting to launch much better this time I actually start going up. It's a little bit slower than I like. I think I'm going to add on a couple of extra boosters and fast forwarding to when I'm trying to expand out my orbit, you can see I get decently far but ends up stopping a lot earlier than I'd like and I'm kind of missing a lot of fuel to make this work. Now testing out the decoupling here, you can see works out pretty well. The protective shell ends up launching out just fine, and I'm able to fire off the second stage a little bit here. Now I ended up trying to launch the third stage, and the last stage ended up going, and it looks like it's losing control. That was me moving it around manually though, I was trying to flip it around to see how easily it would do it, and it felt pretty good. So even though it didn't look like it, that was actually a really good test, and all I wanted to do is add on a couple of extra additions to make this work. Now the first thing I'm doing is adding on a couple of fins, and I didn't notice too big of a problem with stability, but I figured adding these wasn't that big of a deal, and it also adds a little bit of fuel to the rocket, so seemed good enough. And I'm adding on a bunch of these fuel canisters to the top rocket as well. And this is really important because I need to make sure I have at least about 3.2 kilometers per second of delta V to be able to get home with just this rocket. Now after I added all those on, it was getting a little bit heavy, so I switched out the dart engine for one of these larger engines instead, and it was looking pretty good at this point. So I added on a couple of extra boosters, and ended up time warping to get to the right launch window. And after that, it was finally time to get all the way there. So starting out here, you can see it just fell straight down. The launch towers just didn't grab it for some reason. So I just tried again, move the launch towers this time it worked and for real, <laughs> actually taking off. So actually I was accelerating at a pretty good rate. It was better than before. It seems like the extra boosters were really helping out. And after I had that done, slowly started to do my turn. No idea if this is very efficient or not, but seemed fine. And after I got up high enough, I launched down the boosters and you'll see actually a lot of explosions. And it ended up hitting a lot of the fins and causing some problems. And at first I was really worried about the stability because I thought if I lost some fins, it'd be unbalanced or whatever, but it just kept flying fine. So I just let it be and kept burning. And after I burned up high enough, I ended up setting Jewel as my target and starting to expand out my orbit. Now, originally here at Rambo, I was hoping this bottom stage would get me all the way to Jewel and get me that encounter. And that's basically what it did here. So you see, as I expanded out, slowly approached Jewel's orbit, I do get my encounter. And thankfully here, I still have 83 meters per second left of fuel in the bottom tanks. So basically nothing, but it technically was a little bit. So I'm a little bit ahead right now, thankfully. And you can see now I'm starting to warp away from Kerbin and begin my journey in new deep space. So here, things were looking pretty good. I was just waiting to get closer to a jewel. But for some reason here, the encounter just disappeared. And I have no idea why this happened. I've had this sort of thing happen before, and usually it's really bad, but here you'll see I do end up getting my encounter back, so I don't know what was up with that. After I did that, warp to the periapsis, and you can see way out in the distance there, Jewel. After it was there, I ended up throwing off the shell since there's no reason for it to exist, and I figured I didn't want these parts flying around when I'm trying to do something serious. So after I did that, I just flipped everything around, and I used up the last of the fuel in the tanks. It was basically nothing, you see it ran out almost immediately. So after those were dry, I ended up just losing them, and just had the center stage left. So I started to burn a little bit. I didn't want to go too fast here because I worried I'd slam into one of these rocket bodies and cause it to explode. You can see here I ended up clearing them and then I went to full throttle and I slowly started to creep in my encounter a little bit. And you can see eventually here, to quite a while, I do get fully captured and once I have that, I start to pull in my orbit a little bit more. Now here's where I'm going to try to do something that I've never done before. I want to try to get a gravity assist off of Tylo. Now here you also see I'm setting Val as my target and Tylo is the moon right outside of Val. Now Tylo is quite massive. I think it's the most massive 
immersive in this jewel system. So what I can do is kind of use it to pull me in and slow me down a ton. So there I'm just getting my orbit to just barely touch the outside of Tylos, and by messing around a little bit, eventually here you can see I do get an encounter with Tyla. Now this one's actually bad, it's going to fling me further out, but if I tune it a little bit more, you can see here I end up shrinking my orbit a ton. So just 29 meters per second to Delta V, I'm going to be saving probably a few hundred, so it's a pretty big optimization here. So only thing left to do is just warp towards the maneuver node and try it out. So you can see here I'm also starting to face towards it, and once I'm in general direction, I start to fire, ended up warping over to where I'm going to meet Tylo, and you can see it come into view here. Once it's there, you can see this nice curve we have going around Tylo, and I just slowly started to make my way around it. And finally here you can see I do escape it. So I turned on the RGB because why not? After that, you can see fire up the rocket, and I'm just trying to pull my orbit in a little bit closer because it's right by Val's orbit, and I end up running out of fuel that last stage, so I have to dip into this stage, and you can see here, I just am touching the outside of its orbit. So with that done, all I have to do is really just time warp and wait till I get an encounter, and you can see, get that here. Now, this encounter, originally I was sort of thinking I wanted to circularize, find a good spot, and then land, but I'm actually going to be falling straight into Val, so I have no time to really fix anything, and I might as well just land right on it. So I'm kind of just hoping whatever I land on is going to be good enough, and we'll see what happens. So here you can see I'm starting to face retrograde, and I'm starting my descent onto Val. There's really nothing to do for a while, and in fact, I actually waited till about 9,000 meters before I even started firing my engine, and you can see I'm just trying to kill a bunch of my speed, because I'm going like 400 meters per second, which is a little too fast. And I tried going down to about 30, and here I actually ended up overshooting and started going in the wrong direction. So I had to be pretty careful about what I was doing, and eventually here you can see on the surface, I do land. It's pretty flat, thankfully, but the rocket ended up tipping over because I hit the ground just a little too hard. So I started to burn again, and I was hoping I'd be able to correct it, but it was sort of just not worth it, and I ended up just doing another descent, landed, and you can see this was much better. It still looked like it was going to tip over, but ended up correcting itself, and it was all good. So with that done, you can see I have about 2,000 meters per second of Delta V left in the tank. Basically, I'm still going to need to refine about a 1,000 to fill it back up again. So I deployed the drills, and I tried starting the service harvesters, but I realized the problem because they just didn't work, and they kept giving this error message that said, no ground contact. And I guess I did cut it a little bit too close before, so what I did is got rid of the landing gear, and you see I'm right on the engine now, and thankfully the ground's flat enough for me to do this, and it ends up going low enough that both of the drills end up working. And that works out great until I accidentally hit shift and launch myself off the ground. So I just loaded a quick save I had, and after this, I wrote a quick macro, and I'm not sure how I'm supposed to do this, I'm sure this is not the easiest way, but basically since I have no batteries, I have no way to mine or refine at night. So my only solution here is to write a macro so that every single day in the morning it turns on both of the drills, starts mining the entire day, and at night the drills automatically are going to turn off. After that, have the macro wake up again, turn back on the drills, and just keep doing this over and over again. So you can see it's starting to run here, and I just let it run for a very long time, and you see here the fuel slowly start to creep up. Now, eventually it actually does reach the top, and it actually stays there for a bit because I just wasn't paying any attention to it. But eventually I got back to my computer, and you can see here I turned off the macro, and it took 152 days for that to work. So it was kind of very time intensive to get that done. So you can see I redeployed the landing gear. After I did that, I ended up throwing out all the ore that I had left over, since it just weighs a lot and is pretty much useless. After that, I ended up setting Kerbin as my target, and I just kept waiting. Because I needed the angle between Kerbin and Jewel to be 45 degrees, or negative 45 degrees, depending on how you look at that. And eventually here you can see I did get that, and before I left, I just wanted to make sure Bonnie planted a flag, because I'd feel really dumb if I forgot to do that. So you can see here, Bonnie plants a flag, looks pretty good, and with that all done, it was time to launch. Now, I'm not sure why I decided to launch at night, I could have launched during the day and it would have been fine. So you can see here, I'm starting to get up. It's pretty easy to get an orbit around Val, since the atmosphere is non-existent, and the gravity is also not that intense. So here you can see me finishing off the circularization. Once I had that done, waited till I was at the appropriate spot, and started to burn. And what I'm trying to do now is escape Val and just orbit around Jewel, because what I want to do is, once again, have a Tylo encounter, but this time instead of slowing me down, I want it to fling me out a little bit further. So after a lot of playing around, you can see here, I I get that encounter, and it's given me a much larger orbit. So I just warp over to the maneuver node and start to do my burn, and I accidentally overburn just a little bit, so I have to flip around, and once I reach the maneuver node again, I just expand out a little bit, and you can see here, I pretty much match where I want to be, and then the game crashed. So that's super cool. So I had to repeat a lot of that stuff, and you can see eventually here, once again, I ended up expanding out and get a decent orbit. So I approached Tylo again, and you can see I get this similar sort of shape where I'm just sort of wrapping around it a little bit, and I started to fly around it, and finally here you can see I ended up escaping it. And the next thing to do is for me to manually play around with the direction and point myself right where I want to be so I can escape Jewel and get a nice clean encounter with Kerbin, or at least I hoped I would get a nice clean encounter with Kerbin. So as I started to burn here, things were looking pretty good. I ended up escaping Jewel, and I slowly started 
decided to bring my Orbit in so I'd be right next to Kerbin. Only problem is though, once I got near Kerbin, I didn't get an encounter. And the problem was that I was on the wrong plane. So what I had to do was adjust that a little bit at a descending node. And once I had that all set up here, I still wasn't getting an encounter. So I warped away from Jewel and next thing I wanted to do was set up one more maneuver node and this one is to get me that encounter. Now the reason I messed this up was probably because I didn't have the angle between Jewel and Kerbin quite right. So I had to play around with it a little bit and you can see here it actually did cost me. I have to spend about 300 meters per second extra of Delta V than I really needed to. So it was very expensive to make this mistake. And after I got that first burn done, you can see I'm warping over to the second one now. And I just had to face towards the maneuver node and start to do my burn. Now between the two of these, I think it was 400 meters per second overall. So yeah, that was a lot. And you can see I'm only left with about another 400 to get completely captured by Kerbin. So I was a little worried at this point I didn't have enough fuel, but thankfully I did have a good encounter here. And you can see my periapsis is about 13 million meters. Now I think I brought that in a little bit closer to about 4 million after a bit more messing with it. And you can see here, started to warp towards it. So things were looking pretty good, and you can see all the way out the distance there, there's Kerbin. And 4 million meters sounds like a lot, but it actually is closer than the distance that the moon is from Kerbin. So it's pretty tight overall, and I figured here what I could do is just warp to the periapsis, start to burn retrograde, and hope that it would kill enough of my speed. So the first stage ended up doing a little bit, but not enough. But I figured this top stage would definitely do it. So I launch it up, and you can see the amount of speed that I get here, but it's still just not enough to get me in orbit. So what I decided to do is warp a little bit further back, and add in one more maneuver. Now what this one's gonna do is hopefully get me a little bit closer in. You can see here it's already at 3 million meters. But with a little bit more messing with it, I got it down to 85,000 meters. And I figured at that point I'm gonna be slightly above the atmosphere and that's gotta be it. So we're up in closer to Kerbin. You can see we're much closer this time. And you can see I started to do my burn and the first one didn't quite get it. But the second one completely captured me and I did have an orbit, but I thought I could do a little bit better. So I shrunk it down to 62,000 meters. And now when I try the same thing, I get a very similar result, except for the fact that my periapsis is in the atmosphere. Now this means that I'm gonna have to get captured at some point since I'm gonna aero break and I'm 100% gonna be there. So after launching the bottom stage of rockets away, it ended up coming back and hitting me. So I had to shake them off quite quickly before problems ensued. And at this point, I was pretty much home free. I was hitting the atmosphere at about three kilometers a second. It was pretty fast, but the heat shield totally took it, had no problems at all. And after that, you can see here, slowed down to below a thousand. And once I got below 500, my parachute ended up deploying. And at that point, it was pretty much smooth sailing. Just had to slowly fall back down. And you can see here, eventually landed right in the ocean. So lastly, here I have some footage of me flying a plane I built all the way over to where Bonnie is, or somewhere near where she is. And at that point, I'm gonna have swim over, get in the plane, and a flyer back. So guys, thanks for watching. Definitely a really fun video to make. I like doing these sort of experimental things in Kerbal and just seeing what works and what doesn't. So feel free to subscribe if you want to see more content like this. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. And otherwise, until next time.